Hallelujah. Glad to be back with you at Heritage in beautiful Crowley, Texas. It was in the upper 50s this morning in Tulsa. Glory to God. I am so tired of 100 degrees. Of course, you never have it 100 degrees in Texas, I know. Never. We've had so much hot weather in Tulsa. It's so nice. I was talking to Lindsay when I woke up this morning, and she said it was like 58 degrees in Tulsa this morning. Oh, God, thank you. I'm so honored to be here. Pastor Justin and Annette, thank you again for this invitation. Um, and I give honor today to the memory of my dear brother, Jerry Savelle. This is... Uh, He and I have known each other for, for some 40 years. And I'm wearing the tie that he bought me today. <laughs> and I'm trying my best not to spill anything on it. <laughs> but uh, this, is, this is a Jerry Savelle tie, and I like it. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? You want to touch it? You can just touch it. Right? Just, just, just slightly. Just. <laughs> but I honor, I honor his memory. And I was talking with Carolyn after the memorial service, which uh, I'm sure you know I spoke, I spoke at. And I said, Carolyn, do you, do you still want me to come in September? She said, oh, absolutely. And so I'm honored to be here. And Pastor Justin and Annette, thank you for this opportunity. You know, I, I spent so many nights in that home just down the road. And I remember my dad, uh, my dad is the one who said, when you go down to preach for Jerry, be sure you stay in his guest room. So I always stayed in his guest room and he Jerry told me the story. He said, your dad was staying with me once, and I said, Brother Roberts, you just make yourself at home in my home. So about 11 o'clock, Jerry went down to the kitchen, found my dad standing in front of the refrigerator with a carton of milk like this. <laughs> and realizing he was caught, he turned to Jerry and said, well, you told me act like I was at home. <laughs> well, that was Earl Roberts. You catch him drinking an entire cart carton of milk at our house when I grew up. But I thank God. I thank God. Aren't memories wonderful? Thank God for memories. I praise God and I honor his memory. Uh, Carolyn is in Florida. She heard I was coming, so she went to Florida. <laughs> She's preaching today for my longtime friend, Rodney Howard Brown. And I thank God for him and for her. The joy of the Lord came into my life through Rodney Howard Brown many years ago, and uh, I remember uh, when the joy came into my life and the laughter came into my life, I was at a low point in my life, and it transformed my life, and my mother said to me, Richard, you think that this is something new, but when I was a girl in those meetings in Topeka, Kansas, the joy of the Lord would break out, and uh, they would put people on horse-driven carts to take them home because they couldn't walk. <laughs> because of the power of God and because of laughing under the Lord. Laughter doeth good like a medicine. And I praise God. Well, I'm glad to be here today. Uh, we came down uh, yesterday uh, and, uh, and going back because, going back immediately after the service, because two months ago I launched into a new live daily television program on Victory Network. It's at noon and it's live. And tomorrow I'll be talking about this service. And uh, I have not, had not done live television in quite some years. Uh, for, I think, 11 or 12 years back in the 80s and 90s, I did live television five days a week. And I know the rigors of television. And so it's kind of curtailed my traveling just a little bit. I'm not able to stay for very long when I go someplace now because I've got to get back home. So I'll be back uh, tomorrow on, on television. And I thank God for that. I heard the story of this real estate developer was driving down a farm road here in Texas looking for land to develop. When all of a sudden in the rear view mirror, he saw a chicken running behind him. And much to his surprise, the chicken passed him. <laughs> and as the chicken passed him, he saw that the chicken had three legs. Soon the chicken was doing some 60 miles an hour and he chased him in the car and the chicken turned into a farmyard and went into a barn. And he followed him and the old farmer was standing out there in his overalls. And so he got out of the car and said, sir, uh, 
did you see that chicken go in your barn? Did you notice he had three legs? He said, yes, as a matter of fact, uh, we breed three-legged chickens on this farm. He said, you do? Why? He said, well, you see, my wife and I uh, love uh, drumsticks. Uh, but when Junior came along, we needed more than two drumsticks. And so we now uh, breed chickens with three legs. He said, well, tell me, how do they taste? He said, I don't know. I've never been able to catch one. <laughs> uh, I was watching, uh, I was online last night. I'm looking, you know how you get online and you, you kind of surf around and look for things. I, I found myself on YouTube last night and I saw this clip of Ronald Reagan when he was president. And you know, Reagan was famous for his jokes. And he was telling the story last night, I guess this was some 40, 50 years ago. He was in front of a group and he said, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, uh, I attended the Democratic National Convention and when I came out, there was a young man who was selling uh, new, newborn kittens. And, uh, he, and, and as he was selling them out front, he, he said, well, these, these kittens are all Democrats. People were buying them. A few weeks later, they had the Republican convention in the same place. And the young man was out there selling kittens again. And he said, well, these kittens are Republicans. And he said, well, I don't understand that. Two weeks ago, they were Democrats. He said, yeah, but now they have their eyes open. <laughs> Okay, so much for the jokes. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, hallelujah. Let me ask you a question. What are you expecting? What are you expecting today? Wherever Jesus went, there were miracles. It is said that he was either on his way to heal somebody, or he was there healing them, or he was on his way to heal somebody else. Jesus is a healing Jesus. This new program I'm doing is not a program of preaching or teaching. It's a program about healing. It's about the operation of the word of knowledge, about people calling in live. I have live prayer partners, a lot better than dead prayer partners. I've known some of them. And we have about, uh, about 20 live telephones and prayer partners and we take live calls from all over the world for prayer. Praying over those needs and God manifesting the gifts of the Spirit through me, giving those words and people calling in immediately with healing testimonies. We have a stack about like this every day uh, from the day before, people calling in testimonies of healing from all over the world. And I, I've been t teaching a lot lately on what are you expecting? What kind of miracle are you expecting? Is it a physical miracle that you need? Is it a spiritual miracle that you need? Is, a, is it a financial miracle that you need? Is it uh, something in your emotions or in your business or in your job or in your ministry or in some other area of your life? What are you expecting? Praise God. Um, <clears throat> let me take you to a day in the life of Jesus. <clears throat> he was in town walking along with his disciples when all of a sudden a man by the name of Jairus, who was a ruler of the temple, came rushing up to him and said, Sir, would you please come to my home and pray for my daughter? She is at the point of death. And Jesus immediately said, Yes, I'll go with you. And they started walking toward Jairus' house. And as they went toward the house, he was interrupted by a woman who had had an issue of blood in her body for some 12 years. And she had been to the doctors. The doctors had done all that they knew to do, but uh, the medicine in those days was not advanced. And she had spent all of her living and was not any better. She reached out and took hold of the tassels that were on the border of his garment. And Jesus immediately turned around and said, Who has touched me? The disciples said, Well, Jesus, everyone is touching you. The crowd is clamoring, Jesus, touch me. Jesus, heal me. Jesus, deliver me. And Jesus said this was a different kind of touch. It was a touch of faith. It was a touch of expectation. And he turned and he saw the woman. And she told him what she had done. And Jesus said to her, your faith, your expectation 
has made you well. Go and be whole of your plague. And I, I thought as I was reading that this morning again, what must have been going through Jairus' mind? Perhaps he was thinking, Jesus, couldn't she wait? She's had this for 12 years. She's, she's somehow been alive and, and, and made it through. And my daughter is at the point of death. Couldn't you have waited? Couldn't you have waited? And about that time, they came running up to him and said, don't trouble Jesus anymore. Your daughter is dead. Some of you may be facing a situation seems like it's dead today. And there's no way for it to be revived. But I want to remind you that nothing is too hard for God. No matter what it is, nothing is too hard for God. And Jesus said, Jairus, fear not. Believe only. God did not put in you a spirit of fear. But instead, he put in you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Now, the doctors tell us that there are two fears that every human being is born with. The fear of falling and the fear of loud noises. Every other fear is learned. And every other fear comes from Satan. He is the master and deceptioner of fear. That's a new word, deceptioner. I've never said that before. Uh, he is the master of fear. He is the one who brings the spirit of fear. And fear takes hold of you so that you cannot believe. And Jesus said to him, fear not, believe only. And they kept walking toward the house. And when they got there, enough time had passed for them to hire the professional mourners. And that's what they did in those days. Thank God we don't do that today. But they hired singers and musicians to come in and sing and wail and mourn and cry, even whether or not they knew the deceased, you know. And when Jesus got there, that's what they were doing. And Jesus walked in and said, why are you wailing? Why are you weeping? Why are you crying? She's not dead. She's asleep. And their wailing turned to laughter, mocking. They mocked him. They mocked him so much that he said, get out of here. Get out of this. Get out of this house. Take your, take your, your, your mourning, your, 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 your crying, your whining. Take, take this and get out of this house. I don't want anyone here except people who believe. Peter, James, John, and Jairus and his wife. And they went up to the room where the, the girl's dead body lay. And he said those words, Talitha kumi, which means arise, get up. And she woke up. She came out of death. Of course, there was great rejoicing in the house. No more weeping and wailing. And that scene was over and Jesus was heading toward the place where he was going to rest for the evening when he was followed by two blind men. And those two blind men began to shout, Thou son of David, thou son of David, have mercy on us. And Jesus just kept on walking. Disciples with him just kept on walking. And he got to the place where he was going to stay for the night and walked in the house and the two blind men followed him in. Have you ever had somebody just walk in and follow, follow you in your house? That's what they did. And Jesus turned and said, Do you believe? Do you believe that I can do this? What a question. Do you believe that I can do this? I believe he's asking you that question today. Do you believe? If you came with expectation, do you believe that God can handle this? Do you believe? Or do you think you can just get yourself out yourself? A man fell out of a 10-story building out of the window, and as he fell, he saw a flagpole, and he caught it with his hands as he fell and held on for dear life. He began to pray, God, help me, God, help me. And God spoke to him. He said, do you believe that I delivered Moses and the children of Israel out of Pharaoh's hand? Oh, yes, I believe. Uh, well, do you believe that I delivered David from the hand of Goliath? Yes, I believe. Well, do you believe that I delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from Nebuchadnezzar's burning fire furnace? Yes, I believe. Then turn loose. He said, now look here, Lord. <laughs> I got myself into this mess. I'll get myself out. And that's the picture of many people today. <coughs> they think they can get themselves out of the mess that they're in. When there's a God Almighty who sent Jesus to help us get out of the mess. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
What he did, he's still doing. And they, those two men said, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, we believe. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched them and healed the blindness. Three miracles within a matter of, of, a, of an hour or so all happened. And the good news is what he did then, he's still doing now. But your, your faith requires two things. It requires a belief and it requires action. A woman came into one of my dad's services one night. I'll never forget it. She was an African-American woman with a, with a young boy about my age. And he had on metal crutches and uh, one hip was all sunken in. And uh, my, my father received the prayer card from Brother Deweese, who was his longtime associate evangelist. And my dad read the card, and it said that the little boy had been born without a hip socket. I don't mean it had deteriorated. I mean he didn't have one. And his hip was all sunken in like this. And my dad read that card, and there were about 10,000 people in the tent that night. And he looked at that woman. I'll never forget what he said. He said, ma'am, I am I'm so sorry. I just don't have faith for a creative miracle. This healing is going to have to wait until the resurrection. And that woman took the microphone and said, Oral Roberts, I don't ask you to have any faith at all. You just pray and I will do the believing. <laughs> My father said, I'll never forget it. He said, okay. And he laid his hands on the little boy and prayed. And he left in what appeared to be the same condition as when he came. Mm. But the next night, mm. Brother Deweese had the little boy up front. And he was running. And he was jumping. And there were no metal crutches. And my dad went up and put his hand where he had put it the night before. And in the night... God had created a hip socket. How do I know? Because I was there. <laughs> it takes faith, which requires a belief and action. Picture the scene of Jesus on top of the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. I'm sure Peter, James, and John had no idea why they were going up there. Jesus did, but they didn't. And when they got up on top of the mountain, Moses and Elijah appeared. And Peter, James, and John freaked out. They didn't know what to do. They hid behind a rock. And Peter finally said, well, can we build three shelters for you? You know, that's not what they went up there for, but they didn't know what to do. And all of a sudden, a voice from heaven said, this is my son, my beloved son. And suddenly Moses and Elijah disappeared. And Jesus said, now don't tell anybody about it. He was a master psychologist, you know. <laughs> he knew if he said, don't tell him, don't tell anybody, he knew they'd tell everybody they saw. And, you know, Peter's, some people's idea of keeping a secret is telling only one person at a time. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they got down the mountain from that high place. And here was a man who had a demon-possessed boy. And the demon inside the boy would throw him into the fire and throw him into the water and try to drown him, try to burn him, try to kill him. And he saw Jesus coming and he said, Jesus, I, I tried to get your other nine disciples to cast the demon out, but they couldn't do it. Now, if there's anything you can do, if. And Jesus said, sir, it's not if I can do anything. It's if you can believe. If you can believe. And the man said a thing that's very, very, very potent today and very, very appropriate for me to say today. He said, Lord, I do believe help me in the area that I don't believe. Help me in my unbelief. I believe, but help me in my unbelief. Or in other words, I've got this little pocket of doubt. I've got this one little area in my life that I, I, I don't believe the way I, I, I want to believe. And I, I, I dare say every one of us has a little area in our life. We, most areas we have no trouble believing, but there's one area. We just, we, we don't have a grasp on it yet. We, we're having a hard time believing that, that one area. Help me in my unbelief. 
Jesus must have smiled and said, bring that young man to me. And took hold of that boy and cast that demon out. And there was a great miracle. Help me in my unbelief. If there's an area of doubt in your expectation, let's remove it today. Amen. So we can be in full expectation. Full expectation. You know, speaking of, uh, of demon possession, I have seen so much of that in my life, not only in the life uh, of, of going up under my dad, but also in my own life. I've had those kind of things come against me as well. And I understand, I remember one night in the tent, there was a young man who had been brought, he was a teenager. He was uh, demon-possessed. And you know, um, a lot of demon-possessed people are attracted to healing ministries. Uh, you know, you turn the lights on in your backyard and every bug in the neighborhood will show up. <laughs> And this, this boy was violent. And they had chained him to one of the tent poles outside the back of the tent. And they had warned my dad, don't go near him because he's violent. He will strike you. And my father, who was fearless, paid no attention to what they said. Went right up to the young man, I'll never forget it. Put his hand on him, took hold of the demonic spirit and literally pulled it out of him, calling it by name binding it, casting it to the uninhabited places of the earth. And I remember his, the boy's dad unchained him from the pole. And I remember the, the young man falling on his knees and throwing his arms around my dad's legs and saying, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I remember one night we came out of the tent and there was a young teenage girl who was demon possessed. And they had her in a car and they were holding her down. And uh, as my dad, uh, who, was, who was, I said, fearless, as we walked toward that car, uh, the window was down. It was summertime, and the window was down to, to get some air circulating. And uh, a, a man's voice came out of the girl. A deep voice came out of this girl. It was the demon speaking. And I remember hearing the demon say, Here he comes. And I remember him, the demon saying, don't let him get his hands on you, for he will cast us out. You talk about the hair on the back of your neck standing up. When you get in those situations, you better know Jesus. Because those demons are going to look for some place to go. And that's why I always watched my dad very carefully how when he cast the demon out, he always commanded it to go to the uninhabited places of the earth. He got inside that car with that girl and got his hands on her and that demon came out of her. He bound it and cast it to the uninhabited places and that girl began to cry saying, I'm free. I'm free. Amen. And some of you, you're not demon possessed, but you're bound up in something. Something's been holding you down. And today is your day to get free. Today is your day to get free. So what are you expecting? What are you expecting? Are you expecting the same old thing? You know, if you keep on doing the same old thing, you're going to get the same old results. Don't expect something different if you're not going to change the first part. What are you expecting? What are you believing for? On this new program, I'm seeing healing miracles every day. I give a word of knowledge and boom, our phones ring. People call in, I just got healed. Mm -hmm. And they're calling from all over the world getting healed. Got a testimony Friday from Papua New Guinea. They're watching us online. Mm -hmm. Got one from the Netherlands. I got one from South Africa. I got one from Central America. I got one the other day, healing from Russia, watching us live on the Victory Channel. Mm -hmm. What are you expecting? Mm -hmm. What are you believing for? Are you expecting miracles? Or you just saying, well, I, 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 I guess I can live with this way, this way a little bit longer. That's not what I want. I want the best. When my wife was carrying our children, we would say about her, she's expecting. That's what you say to a woman who's pregnant. You say, she's expecting. And it didn't matter if it was summer or winter or spring or fall. She was expecting. 
It didn't matter if it was 100 degrees outside or if it was 25 degrees. She was expecting. What was she expecting? She was expecting a child. And I can remember when she carried our children, about the seventh month, she would say, I want to have this baby today. <laughs> now, she didn't mean it. I understood how she felt, you know, at, up to a point. <laughs> but she didn't mean it. She didn't want the baby born in the seventh month. She wanted the baby born in the ninth month. Because that's how God created the birth system. But she was expecting, she was expecting the birth of a child. And I thank God because she gave me three of the most beautiful daughters. And how I praise God for that because she was expecting. What are you expecting? When I pray as I'm going to do in a moment, what are you expecting? What are you believing? And will you put action to that belief? She and I were in Denver preaching great church there in Denver. And they had brought a woman down the center aisle in a wheelchair and put her about here next to the first lady on the, on the aisle of, of the first row. And she sat there in a the wheelchair and I began praying for people. I looked over at her and I, I said to her, ma'am, if, if all you can do is move a finger, move it. Get into action. And I'm sure there were those in the congregation who might have said, Richard, that's a cruel thing to say to a woman who's in a wheelchair. And I looked at her and she looked at me and she just started going like that. And I began to pray for others and I looked over and she was doing this. And I prayed for some others and I looked over and she was doing this. I looked over again and the wheelchair was empty. And she was walking across the front. People were rejoicing. Her faith, her belief got her into action. So when I pray for you this morning, I want you to release your faith. The man said, Richard, I have all the faith in the world. I said, well, that's your problem. You still got it. <laughs> faith was not intended to lie dormant in your heart. Faith is there for you to use it, to expect a miracle. And I know I've told this story before here. I've told it all over the world, but it bears repeating again this morning. You know, I guess I, I guess I heard Brother Hagin tell us some stories a hundred times, and I got something new out of it every time. And I heard my dad's stories, and I, I heard something new from it every time. But it's appropriate this morning before I pray. When I was ten, I developed twenty-two warts on my left hand, and they were spreading. And I played baseball, basketball, football. I played every sport a boy could play, and. Uh, throwing a football, throwing a baseball, shooting a basketball. And, and I would come home from games and practices and my hand would be bleeding because I'd tear the tops of those warts off and they'd be bleeding. And my mother uh, would, would uh, usually put out a basin of water and soak my hand in, in warm, soapy water. Well, that doesn't do much, but that's what she did. Now, I'm talking about the late 1950s now, okay? And uh, she said, we're going to go to the doctor and we're going to have those warts burned off. Now, in those days, that's what they did. Today, they freeze them. But in those days, they burned them off. And it scared the living daylights out of me. My dad came home, and she told him what she was going to do. And he said, well, Evelyn, that's fine. Let's also pray. I said, please. <laughs> and so he took me in their bedroom and sat me down on their bed and said, I'm going to pray for you. And when I do, I want you to release your faith and get into expectation. I said, what do you mean release your faith? He said, well, son, you do that through a point of contact. I said, well, daddy, what's a point of contact? He said, a point of contact, son, is something that you do. And when you do it, you release your faith and you get into expectation. And he saw by the look on my face that I had no idea what he was talking about. And so he looked over in the wall and said, do you see that light switch on the wall? I said, yes. He said, that light switch is a point of contact. It has no power, but it's hooked up to the electric company yes. that has the power. Yeah. So when you flip the switch, you touch the power and the lights come on. Yeah. Right. Well, I could understand that. He said, now the faith in your heart is just like that light switch. It's hooked up to God. 
And when you flip the switch, when you release your faith, you touch God, and that's when the miracles begin. I said, okay. He said, now I'm going to pray. Now, when you hear me say in Jesus' name, you let your faith go. I said, all right. He began to pray and he came to the point in his prayer when he said in Jesus' name and not knowing what to do and being just 10 years old, I just did what seemed natural. I just put my hands right here and I said to myself, faith, get up there to God. I release my faith. I believe. I looked down at my hand and every wart was still there. I looked at my daddy and he said something that I've never forgotten and I've said it all over the world. He said, now son, we have prayed and we have believed. We've released our faith. Now let's expect a miracle. Well, I went to bed that night. The next morning I woke up, I looked, they were still there. Second morning, they were still there. The third morning, they were still there. The fourth, the fifth, the sixth morning, they were still there. The seventh, the eighth, the ninth morning, they were still there. But on the tenth morning, I woke up, I looked at my hand, and every wart had disappeared. You can see it. Never had another one since. My hand is just as smooth now as it was that day when it was healed. But more than that, I learned how to release my faith. Yes, sir. And when I pray for you this morning, you take the faith that's inside you and you believe with it. You say, Lord, I'm releasing my faith for a miracle in Jesus' name. Who needs healing this morning in some area of your life? Who needs healing in your back? Stand up. Who needs healing in your feet and legs? Who needs healing in your knees? Who needs healing in your shoulders? Who needs healing in your eyes? Who needs healing in your hearing? Who needs healing in your heart? your blood pressure, your blood sugar? Who needs healing in your bones? Who needs healing in your circulatory system? Who needs healing in some organ in your body? Who needs healing today in your blood? Just stand up. Who's had an attack of cancer? Stand for prayer. So I'm going to pray. And when I do, all heaven is going to break loose. Are you hearing me? But friend, it takes two to tango. Yes, God can move sovereignly. We know that. Most of the healings I've seen in my life have come when God and people get together in their faith. That's right. You can't do the healing. I can't do the healing, but God is not going to do your believing. Without God, I cannot, but without me, he will not. We've got to do something ourselves. So don't get your eyes on me. Yes, I carry a healing anointing, but don't get your eyes on me. Get your eyes on him. He's the one who'll do the healing. I'm just the vessel he's going to move through. I'm like the hose that the water flows through. The hose has no power, but it sure can allow the power to flow through it. And that's what I am this way. I'm like a hose. I'm the conduit that God uses today. And if you'll release your faith and believe God, I'm expecting great miracles today. And in a moment after I pray, people are going to come down here in the front and they're going to testify of the healing power of God. We'll have some microphones down here. People will come forward and give testimonies of what God is doing today. And we'll see the miracle working power of God right here at Heritage here in Crowley, Texas. Are you ready? Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to release your faith? Lay your hand on yourself right now where you need healing. In the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I come against this satanic attack. And that's what it is. This satanic attack of sickness and disease. Yes. 
In Jesus' name, I come against it. I rebuke every trace of pain. Pain, I command you. But there it comes. In the authority of Jesus' name, come out. Pain, you turn loose. You let go and you come out in Jesus' name. I speak to the pain that's in the shoulders. In the name of Jesus, pain in the shoulders, come out now. And there it goes in Jesus' name. Ah, yes, hearing, hearing opening up right now. Word of knowledge, hearing opening up on the left side right now. Hearing opening up on the left side. Hearing being restored in the left side right now. I speak to every shoulder to be able to move all the way up, all the way down. Pain free. Pain free in the collarbone. Pain free at the point of your shoulder. Pain free from the pain that shoots down the arm from the shoulder. Pain free. Shoulder be healed. And here comes healing into shoulders now. Warmth is entering into shoulders right now. Healing is entering into shoulders now. Backs and feet and legs in the name of Jesus be healed. I send the word of God into your back, into your feet, into your legs, into your knees. Be healed into your hips. Be healed. You foul, tormenting arthritis, come out. There it goes and enter again, no more forever. Come out in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for healing, for healing arthritis, for osteoporosis. Thank you for healing it, healing it, healing it. Thank you for every bone, every muscle being healed by the power of God, every tissue. Thank you, Father. Thank you for healing every tendon. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the swelling. I rebuke the pain. Come out. Swelling, go down. All the fluid on the knee. Come out in the name of Jesus. Just drain supernaturally in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone's going to find you able to move better right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Loss of hearing in the authority of Jesus' name. Deafness, loss of hearing. Come out. Come out of these ears in the name of Jesus. Ear canal, open up in the name of Jesus. Healed, whole and well in your hearing. Eyes, cataract, glaucoma, blurred vision, dry eyes, spots. In the name of Jesus, all the loss of vision. Come out in the name of Jesus and enter again no more forever. Eyes and ears be healed. Anyone with a problem in your throat or your mouth or your teeth or your gums, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Tooth problem, gum problem, gum disease, be healed. Larynx, voice box, be healed. Throat, be healed. Tonsils, be healed. In the name of Jesus. Lung condition, anyone with a lung condition, COPD, asthma, emphysema, come out. I arrest you, command you in Jesus' name, come out. And enter into these lungs again, no more forever. Lungs, breathe, lungs, breathe, lungs, breathe without coughing, without choking. Be healed. I rebuke the shortness of breath and for healing to come into these lungs and the sinuses and, and the allergies. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Way up in the sinuses, be healed. The polyps in the nose, uh, just dissolve and come out. The deviated septum, be healed. A nose that has been broken, just, just straighten out right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for doing it. Thank you, Father, for doing it. Stomach, kidney, liver, lower tract, digestion, hernia, ulcer, come out in the name of Jesus. All that burning, stabbing pain, the difficulty in eating, about 30 minutes, it comes after 30 minutes after you eat, all that burning, stop, that you may be able to eat normally in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for healing. Heart condition, arteries, arteries filled with plaque, come out in the name of Jesus. Arterial sclerosis, I rebuke you. Every artery, every vein, open up. Carotid artery, arteries around the heart, arteries up and down the body, be healed from the plaque. Be healed in Jesus' name. Heart that's too large, the enlarged heart, come down to normal size. Heart beat normally. No more arrhythmia, no more skipping of beats. In the name of Jesus, the, the, the heart rate that's too fast, slow down to the normal range in Jesus' name. And Lord, the blood pressure, the hypertension, the blood pressure that's too high, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the high blood pressure. Come down into the normal level. 
and the pressure that's too low come up into the normal level in Jesus' name. And the blood sugar problem, the diabetes from the high blood sugar and the, and the uh, hypoglycemia from the low blood sugar in the name of Jesus, blood sugar regulate. Come into the normal range in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Every cancer, every tumor, every mass, every growth, come out in Jesus' mighty name. Listen, friends, we serve a risen Savior who has healing in his wings. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did for Jairus' daughter, what he did for that woman with the issue of blood, what he did for those blind men, he's still doing. What he did for that man with the demon-possessed boy, he's still doing today because he's the same. He hasn't changed. Now let your faith go. Let your faith go. Let your faith go. Let your faith go. Believe. Fear not. Believe only. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now just lift your hands and begin to give him thanks and praise. Begin to give him thanks and praise. Begin to give him thanks and praise. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We receive your healing touch. We release our faith. We're expecting miracles. Hallelujah. 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 Now just begin examining yourself. Right now, just begin examining yourself. Just begin examining yourself. See what God's doing. Just begin examining yourself right now. Just begin examining yourself all over the church. Just examine yourself. See what God's up to. See what he's doing. I'll tell you, there's pain leaving. Knees being healed. Feet being healed. Shoulders being healed. Backs being healed. Discs and vertebra being healed in the name of Jesus. Every back pain, come out. Eyes being healed. Hearing being healed. Stomach being healed. Breathing getting better. Hallelujah. Who can tell a difference? Put your hand up. I mean, if you can tell, there's a healing. If you can tell, there's a healing. Wave your hand at me. If you can tell. I mean, you, you can tell there's a healing. Put your hand up. If you can, step out in the aisle and come down here. Step out in the aisle. Come down here. Come down here. Make a line behind me. Behind you? Yeah. You step back. Step, step back. I've got it. I've got it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. If you can tell, there's a healing. Right up here, sir. Y'all, everybody else be seated for a minute. Who else can tell there's, there's a healing happening? Examine yourself. If you can tell there's a healing, come on down here. Come on. Others of you, just, just check yourself out. See what God is doing. Yeah, come, I mean, if you know you're being healed, if you know it, come on down here. Jeff, sir, what happened to you when we prayed? I've had, had shoulder pain for probably the past few months, like in my, in my joints. And uh, you were talking about having heat. And the best way I could describe it is a hot flash. Don't really know exactly what that means, but I... That's the best I'm way I could. I'm grateful you don't know what that is. Well, yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. That's what, that was another reason I didn't want to come up here because I, I didn't know how to describe it, but I'm able to do this with, without any pain, so <laughs> praise the Lord. No more pain? No. Pain's gone? Uh, yes, yes. How long have you had the pain? Uh, se several months. It, several months. Yes. What did you feel when I prayed? Uh, it was just, like I said, it was like you said heat. Just hot? Yes, when you started, I'm sweating right now just thinking about it. What you were talking about heat, and uh, so I mean, that's, that's the best way I can. Do. I'm out of words. I, anyway, God is good. What happened to you when we prayed? I feel my headache went away, and I just feel some sort of peace like within me, like my mind, my heart, everything just 
I know that I'm healed. Praise God. Praise God. What happened to you, sir? Um, for the past four to five months, my shoulder has been hurting so bad I, I couldn't even turn my head. Um, I couldn't sleep at night. It, I just lay in pain and, and roll from one side to the other. And I'm turning my head. And, and I started crying a while ago. And, um, and then uh, it just it was like my shoulder still caught on fire. And then I just I couldn't stop laughing. You could ask my wife. With just so, so much joy. That, and I did exactly what you said. When you were 10 years old, you, you released I released it. You gave your faith yes. to God. And you can move it freely now. And you I can move, move it freely on. now, and it's still on fire. It's still, still burning. still on fire. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's Praise still God. Praise God. Yes, sir. Oftentimes, people describe it as a burning, a, a, a warmth. Uh, what happened to you, sir, when we prayed? When you prayed, I was having shoulder problem as well on, the, on my left shoulder, and I didn't feel any heat. I just felt the pain go away. And I have a, a spot in my back that I was wondering if I had an organ or something that was messed up because there was a spot in the, in the middle of my back. It wasn't in lower, you know, I knew it wasn't my kidneys. It just felt like it was a really tight muscle that maybe if I go to a massage therapist, I'd be all right. But the Lord came in and pain's gone from that too. So my shoulder and shoulder and, the Lord and my you. back as well is gone. And uh, I, I also, my doctor proclaimed that I had type 2 diabetes, but I say I don't. Amen. I claim what you said. The healing is here. I on it in Jesus' name. Praise God. I Praise no God. longer have type 2 diabetes. Praise God. Ma'am, what happened when we prayed? Um, well, I fell and busted my knee in the ice storms a couple of years ago, and I went to that Southwest Hospital out here, Harris or whatever, and the Muslims was running it. And so they cut it open. I guess they just looked at it and sewed it back up. And they said they put screws and bolts in it, but they never did because I had the x-rayed up in McAllister, Oklahoma, and come find out that I've never had any screws or bolts in my knees. So what he just lied to me. Well, when you prayed, well, Joel Steele, she prayed for it right after it happened because he forgot to put the screws and bolts in it. And uh, the Lord healed well, what, it and took happened, away the pain. What happened today? And then uh, I prayed for it a while ago because it swelled up. And sometimes it swelled up like a football. And then my preacher, W.B. Grant, would pray for it. And it'd go down like someone stuck a needle in it. So then I... I prayed for it today and, and it had a lot of fluid on it. And when you said fluid, it, it went away. Fluid's gone? Yeah, the fluid's gone. And then uh, I got one better than that. Uh, <laughs> see, <laughs> see, <laughs> see, I, I used to live up there by uh, Oral, Oral Roberts and them, you know, so I'm a charter member. And uh, I, I never did get to play hooky from school because every time I got sick, go put your little hands over on Oral Roberts' hands and Jesus is going to heal you. And or go put your, when you come on TV, put your little hands on Oral Roberts' hands and Jesus will heal you. And I never did get to play hooky from school like everybody else because Jesus always healed me. Made me so mad because old Roberts prayed Give for me. God Jesus bless you. healed me. What happened? What happened when we prayed? Uh, so I've been having some uh, real coughing problems. I haven't been able to eat. Lost like 35 pounds. Did you hear me say that uh, about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what happened oh, when we prayed? My wife put her hand on my chest and I felt throbbing. And I don't feel like coughing anymore. You think you're going to be able to eat? Yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to you? Praise the Lord. Uh, I was experiencing, going on about two years now, uh, pain in my right shoulder. The doctor called it a frozen shoulder, something uh -huh. that I was completely unfamiliar with, had no idea what was going on. The last uh, examination I had, the doctor said that I'm about 90% healed. If I lay down on my right shoulder too long at night, it'll wake me up because of the pain. Today, I know that I'm completely and freely healed. Amen. 
I've been restored. I don't even acknowledge the pain anymore. On, on the release of my faith, I begin to breathe differently, stronger. And I know that today I receive my healing completely. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful for it. Amen. Praise God. What happened to you? What happened to me? Yeah, what today when we prayed? Sugar diabetes. Well, how can you tell the difference? I have a meter on my arm. Okay. And it tells me what my blood sugars are. Did it just change? It is down to 106, which is good, which is good. It's gone as high as 400, and that's not good. No, it's not good I at passed all. out twice with it. And, and it went down times. today when we prayed. Yeah, yeah. Now that's a miracle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What happened to you, sir? Her. I'm, I'm supporting You're her. with her. Yes. Okay. What happened to you, ma'am? I woke up two days ago with my foot just in pain. I couldn't hardly walk. I was telling them also that I said, I'm healed. I said two days ago I was healed, but the pain is gone. Oh, Praise God. God. Hallelujah. What happened to you, sir? My neck has been killing me for a while. Your right neck? Right here. And as you were praying, God was like saying, release your praise. And as I began to release my praise, as you was praying, mm -hmm. it just began to feel, feel good. No, the pain's feel gone? Free. Any and, pain now? Yeah, and it, it's a, just a half a second, but it's a song that says, I feel good. <laughs> good, good. I feel good. Oh, yes, my Lord. There is just something about the name of Jesus. Say it What happened when we prayed? <laughs> I've had asthma for 47 years, and it just feels like this heaviness, the weight on your chest. And when, when we prayed, it just. Lift it up, and you can take full, deep breaths. And take, then, breathe all the way in now. How long has it bothered you? Pardon? How long? 47 years. It's bothered you that long? Yeah. I mean, since I've been born. And now, I mean, it, it's oh, gone. My so. <laughs> what happened to you? Oh, with the laundry list. <laughs> A what? The laundry list. A laundry list? I've had a numer numerous things that I've been dealing with in my body. What happened when we prayed today? I've been believing God for a lot of healing. I've been dealing with inflammation. And my lymphatic system has not been acting right mm -hmm. in my legs and my feet. And I've been dealing with swelling. What difference can you tell today? I took my shoes off and there's no swelling. And, and, and the Holy Spirit said, the Holy Spirit said, that's all you're going to ask for? You've got a list. You know, the people with leprosy, the ones that came back and praised me, I completed their healing and restored their body. Is that all you're going to ask? So I put my faith out for the rest of it. He said, you keep your faith up and you watch what I do. <laughs> Brother, what happened to you when we prayed? Well, um, Pastor Justin was the uh, vessel God used for my back. And um, I ended up having blood clots and um, what else? Uh, a knee surgery. About, I think Blood two or clots? three, two, yeah, and knee two or three surgeries, and um, so I had to work, and my back has been kind of coming back, and my knee still have a little stabbing pain. But when you started praying with us, I did have like a like a electric bolt come out my bottom of my leg, out that way I could feel it. How's your knee now? It's 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 better, and I'm claiming it to be better. But if you want to put hands on it, I don't mind. It's better. <laughs> yeah. In the authority, stretch your hands out toward him. Right now, in the authority of Jesus' name. It, there it goes. There goes the rest of it now. Knee, be healed. Now, just start moving your knee now. You're going to find a difference. Just start moving it right now. Start moving your knee right now. Yeah, yeah you're going to find the pain's gone. 
There it goes. Feel the difference now? Yeah. Yeah, I, I know. Difference, yeah. I saw it. I saw it go. Yeah. Praise God. Somebody give praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Everybody standing with me. Lift your hands under the Lord. Father, right now, I take authority. I take authority over any sickness, any disease, any fear, any pocket of doubt, anything that is unlike God that has tried to come against you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it. Satan, you take your hands off in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you. Praise you. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. Praise you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. 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 Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Pastor was talking about Judah, which means praise. And when the praise goes up, the walls come down. That's what he was talking about today. Thank you, Father. Just, just worship him this morning. Thank you, Father. Now, you know, sometimes healings come quickly. Sometimes they come over a period of time. I'm not in charge of that. My dad used to call it winting. I remember he prayed once for my wife when she had a migraine headache. And he said, you'll have this migraine for three more days, then you'll never have another one. She said, or why? Why three more days? He said, I don't know. That's just what the Lord said to me, three more days. And then he said to her, Lindsay, you're winting. And she said, what do you mean winting? He said, the Bible says that some were healed when they went, as they went. Not all healing happens instantaneously. Your healing might start this afternoon. Might start tonight. I get lots of testimonies from people saying, well, Richard, you prayed for me, but three or four days later, the healing man was manifested. Those warts didn't dis disappear for 10 days, but they've been gone now for 66 years. <laughs> Praise God. Almost 66 years it will have been gone. So don't be discouraged. Keep your faith moving. Every day with expectation, I opened my eyes and I looked at my hand, expecting them to go. And 10 days later, they were gone. I learned how to expect a miracle. And let me tell you what, this church founded by my dear brother, Jerry Savell, is a place of expectation. And to see you today and to feel you and to hear your worship and to feel like the roof's going to come off this place with the praise and the worship. And to be under Pastor Justin and Annette and all their ministerial staff. This is the place to be. If I lived here in the Crowley area, this is where I'd be on Sunday. I'd be right here. And I thank God for you. And some of you, you know some people that need to be here on Sunday. Put a ball and chain on them and drag them here, okay? Get them in this place. Because this is a place of healing. This is a place of miracles. It's a place of victory. And I thank God for that. Now, somewhere in this building, there is a lobby. I don't know where it is. Is it that way? I don't know. I, I, I've never been in it. I don't know what it is. I always come to the back door, so I don't know. Is there a lobby? Is there, a, is there really a lobby? Is he telling the truth? Is there a lobby? Somewhere in the lobby, there is a little table. And it has some resources that I brought. One is a book that I have not yet released on television. I'm not going to release it by another two weeks. So you are the first group of people that I've ever offered it to. It's called your, uh, The Ultimate Source. You know, your bank's not your source. Your family's not your source. Your husband, your wife, your children, your job. Those are instruments. God is your source. This is called The Ultimate Source. 
It's available. I'm going to release this on television in the next couple of weeks. But you're the first group of people I've ever offered it to. Secondly is uh, my wife's newest book, Discover Your True Strength. It's the follow-up to her book, Discover Your True Worth. This is Discover Your True Strength, and she's working on number three right now, which is going to be Discover Your True Peace. She's writing that one now, and her book is about ten times better than mine. <laughs> and it just irritates the life out of me that she's a better writer than I am. But she is terrific, and they are available out there, and I praise God, and I'm going to give these two to Annette. Thank you. Now, one more thing. One more thing. Turn and face someone. Turn and face someone. Let's do one more thing before I sit down. You've been wanting to look at them anyway. <laughs> now, the book of James, chapter 5, says, Pray ye one for another that they may be healed. No, I'm sorry. It doesn't say that, does it? Pray one for another that you may be healed. I used to think it said, pray one for another that they may be healed. That's not what it says. It says, pray one for another that you may be healed. I want you to lay your hands on them and begin to pray a healing prayer, not only for them to receive healing, but for that healing to come back to you in the way you need it. So lay your hands on them and begin to pray right now. Pray for their healing and expect that as you pray for their healing, the healing will come back to you in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for this one, this man, this woman. I release my faith for their healing, healing from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. And Lord, as I pray for their healing, I'm expecting, I'm believing for that healing to come back to me in the way I need it most. And I thank you, Father. I praise you. In Jesus' name.